Hello, everybody. Welcome into Talking Fitchburg on this Thursday, October 14th, 2021. I'm Jeremy Crosby. It's been a wonderful day. Glad you're tuning in with us tonight. And you got to feel good with that weather. Not a gloomy day, not a rainy day, not even really a cold day. It's just gorgeous out there. I wish we had football tonight and not tomorrow. Tomorrow's going to be cold out. But tonight, it's beautiful. And so if you're uh, tuning in right now, the sun's uh, coming down, you know, pretty soon. So hurry up and get on a walk right after the show, though. We got a lot coming up here on the show. And uh, we'll be uh, taking you out to uh, two different events uh, happening uh, yesterday. First, the Hispanic Heritage Luncheon happening yesterday at the Monona Terrace. Uh, we have some uh, uh, or have a piece on that today. Plus, we'll take you out to the public uh, safety event held by the fire department. Yes, it was held last night on Traceway Drive. Did you go out there? Well, don't worry if you didn't. We've got an interview, and uh, we'll check in with the fire department and see how it went, and uh, tell you when that next event is coming up as well. So a lot to get to as far as uh, the headlines go, and uh, just another great, uh, great fall week here in uh, Fitchburg. And there's a fly in my uh, TV studio at home, <laughs> so ignore me if you see me going like this. Or maybe it's the spiders behind me. That's maybe that's what it is. Whatever the case may be, let's uh, jump into this. And uh, we start with this: uh, an arrest made in an attempt homicide investigation. Tuesday morning, Fitchburg Police Department personnel took a 26-year-old man into custody in connection to an attempted homicide from earlier September. Rumar Brown was arrested around 11:15 a.m. at an apartment complex in the town of Madison and booked into Dane County Jail for a violation of his extended supervision. Brown is under uh, supervision of the Wisconsin Department of Corrections for an original charge of armed robbery. Brown ran from an officer when he was first spotted and a police canine uh, apprehended him. Officers recovered a loaded firearm with an extended magazine that he discarded while running as uh, running as well as narcotics. A vehicle stolen in the armed carjacking in Illinois was also recovered in the area of the arrest. Officers looked uh, uh, located evidence linking Brown to a recent possession of the vehicle. The original carjacking remains under investigation in Illinois. Attempted homicide incident remains under investigation and no additional arrests have been made, nor any charges have been referred. Detectives are still investigating Brown's potential connection to the September 8th incident. Charges for Brown uh, related to Tuesday's arrest will be forwarded. Uh, to the Dane County, uh, uh, Dane County District Attorney's Office for review. And uh, you can see there uh, the firearm we were talking about with the extended uh, magazine there uh, in the photo. Uh, the, uh, again, we'll uh, see where the charges go here uh, for this uh, incident. Uh, but uh, that, again, another, uh, another case uh, being, uh, maybe I guess you could say case cracked, right? Or... Uh, case uh, getting uh, through as far as uh, the police department goes. So uh, great job uh, to the men and women of the police department. All right, moving on. The Friends of the Fitchburg Public Library have their used book sale uh, coming up. It'll be coming up here uh, this time next week. The Friends of the Fitchburg Public Library will hold their used book sale, which, by the way, by the way, they didn't have it last year. So there's going to be a lot of books. And uh, this is October 21st through the 23rd. But I'm suspecting that on the 21st, there's going to be a pretty good line at the library for this because I'm paying Andrew like extra money to stand in line for me to get all the books that I want and media as well. Uh, sometimes they have some movies there, too. Just saying. So let's tell you the times. 12 to 5. They'll be on the October 21st and 22nd and 10 a.m to 4 p.m. on October 23rd. Remember, the proceeds for this support the Fitchburg Public Library, and that's what it's all about. So uh, I was told, again, by uh, library officials, maybe this is the inside track. You're only getting it right here on Talking Fitchburg that they have a lot of books. <laughs> You're like, well, there's breaking news. Just saying. So uh, hopefully we'll see you out there uh, for that on the 21st. Speaking of zombies... <laughs> <laughs> Foamy zombies uh, is the next story we're going to. It's science crafts at the library. Yeah, foamy zombies. I don't know. This sounds interesting. Uh, combine Halloween and science with foamy, <laughs> foamy zombie craft experiments. October 27, 9 a.m. Andrew, I don't know. This is going to be an interesting one. That's all I'm saying. It's going to be an interesting one. Uh, so, yeah, step out at the library. You just may want to find out what it is. Just saying. 
I don't know why I'm saying just saying, but I'm just saying. All right, Clean Sweep Household Hazard Waste Drop-Off event is coming up on the 23rd here of October. Uh, this uh, will be uh, hosted in the parking lot at Marketplace Drive behind Funk's Pub in Oak Bay. This is an opportunity to properly dispose of paints, household chemicals, and other hazardous household waste products that shouldn't be placed in your curbside garbage bins. What's really great about this is you're not having to drive all the way over to Clean Sweep. They're coming to you. And they, I guess what they do each year, they go to a different municipality. So it's been a while since they've been in our area. So we definitely want to make sure you come out for this. And in fact, we previewed this event earlier this week. So you should check that out. Our friend Phil uh, Groupie uh, shared information about this and all of the great events coming up uh, related to keeping our, uh, well, I almost said keeping our landfills clean. <laughs> keeping it, uh, you know, recycling. Andrew said that too, but, you know, we want to make sure you recycle properly, right? So it doesn't end up in the landfill. Anyway, Dane County Clean Sweep, the Madison Metropolitan School District, and the Madison Area Municipal Storm Water Partnership, all part of this. And you can get your tickets in advance. It's $10 per car. So uh, see the Eventbrite ticket link at the website, fitchburgwi.gov. Get yourself signed up for it. But you can show up day of with your stuff but, but i would suggest that you click on the link and check it out just to make sure you're, you're ready to go and since i'm talking about household cleanup you're probably like is this the same as the recycling day event no they're separate you heard it here first recycling day event uh, electronic recycling the fall recycling day event will be scheduled for saturday november 6 8 a.m to 11 a.m at city hall campus this event will include confidential paper shredding and recycling, electronics recycling, and the med drop for safe disposal of those prescription drugs. You can check out the brochure online at fitchburgwi.gov. Uh, there you can uh, learn about the things you can dispose of. There's also additional costs for the electronic recycling. So please take note of that if you're disposing like huge TV monitors or any size TV monitors, some extra costs there and appliances as well. So. Make sure you read it where you bring it down so you're not surprised with uh, some additional costs as far as the recycling day goes. And like I said, this is the annual fall recycling day event. We didn't have the spring one, but we are having this one. So I'm sure it's going to be busy. So I would say show up early if you can. All right. Finally, Better Business Bureau has uh, some tips, uh, eight surprising facts about identity theft. We've talked about a lot about identity theft. So uh, these should be things you should know of, but maybe they'll surprise you. Here you go. Number one, fraud and identity theft rose, rose by 45% from 2019 to 2020. And when you really think about it, it probably makes sense, right? Because you're at home more, you're on your computers, all that things. And it says here also the confusion over the COVID-19 pandemic collided with the rapid transition to remote work and learning all uh, came together at the same time. Plus, you know, people lost their jobs, loved ones too. So together, these factors combined to a sharp rise in scam fraud and identity theft, nearly doubling the number of identity theft reports consumers submitted to the Federal Trade Commission in 2019. So that's crazy. Number two, 29% of all reports submitted to the Federal Trade Commission were about identity theft. 29% of all of those reports. That's pretty crazy. Uh, consumers nationwide submitted 1.4 million reports of identity theft to the FTC's Consumer Centennial Network. And the identity theft was the most com commonly reported incident, topping common scam types like imposter or an online purchase scams. So, yeah, it's definitely happening out there, right? Number three, reports of thieves taking over accounts have increased 72%. 72% since 2019. That's a startling statistic. As more sense, uh, services shift uh, for online, consumers' private information shifts as well. One consequence is a rise in data breaches from business and account takeovers for consumers. A study uh, done by uh, a research group dis uh, discovered that not only are account takeovers growing, they also have a higher risk of financial loss as well. Better you take all of these things <laughs> You know, you take it for granted how easy it is to do things sometimes. And it's just the new wave of these uh, thieves uh, trying to uh, get your data and uh, financials. So you got to be careful out there. Make sure you change out those passwords routinely and put on that too uh, authentic. Uh, so I say, how do you say that? Two, two factor authentication. Thanks, Pamlet. All right. Millennials are now the most common target for identity theft. 
yeah, you've been picking on the older adults. Not anymore. And well, I guess I'm a millennial, so <laughs> that's me too. Consumers between the ages of 30 to 39 made up the largest share of reported identity theft victims. Come on. In 2020, and they remain the most common reports. Common reporters of identity theft so far this year as well. So not only, I mean, I guess that's the number, right? They're reporting it, but they're also a part of it. So you got to report it when that does come up. Number five, 23,651 identity theft incidents affected people below the age of 19. Unfortunately, children aren't safe from identity theft. And it is often takes longer to recognize that identity theft has occurred when victims are young. Some thieves may even get away with a scheme for years before they're caught. So it's never too early to monitor that credit report. When's the last time you pulled a credit report, Andrew? Social media users are 30% more likely to fall victim to identity theft. Thieves can learn tons of valuable information about their potential victims just by glancing at the social media. Think twice before you post things on social media. Number seven, most consumers uh, underestimate the risk for identity theft. I'm thinking that's probably the like most right there uh, for uh, underestimating that it will ever, it'll never happen. And number eight, identity theft has lasting emotional effects on victims and it uh, takes a major toll on a victim's mental health. Repairing accounts, requesting refunds and enhanced privacy safeguards can cause stress, fatigue, and even depression. So. I'll link to uh, identity theft. So I would say this list is pretty, uh, pretty darn good. Overall, you should report it and take the time. Take the time. We talk about this stuff all the time here on Talking Fitchburg, and we want to make sure that you're learning something, you're reporting it, and you're staying ahead of it uh, so you don't become a victim of identity theft. All right, that does it for our headlines. I need to take a break. Whew, I'm winded. Coming up next, we're going to take you out to the Hispanic Heritage Month Luncheon. Next, right here on Talking Fitchburg.